it is five fact friday but a couple things happened and i thought i would take you with me so first of all i got my first order on depop last night and i want to run to the post office as fast as possible so it can get to her unfortunately it's a friday so i don't really know what's gonna happen with that but also i'm out of coffee so I'll show you where I like to get coffee when I'm at my house. It's this really cool spot in the neighborhood and I should be turning here. This lady across the street's looking at me. You wanna be on YouTube? Oh, we're almost here. iced coffee and I really like going to that coffee shop because John helped build it which I think is really cool because it's in our neighborhood and my one tattoo artist helped brand it so I feel like I'm being I don't it feels really cool to go there hey it's quicken and it's five fact Friday thanks for following me around my neighborhood a little bit here are some questions I got this week why no tattoos on left arm and why no tattoos on left arm? Because I have just wanted to finish this arm for the longest time and then once I got to it, I wanted to finish my right leg. So there's nothing on my left side of my body at all um, except for this little red heart. And I also have a... It's in... It's a... <laughs> um, keystone for... Pennsylvania. Heart presses up against it if I'm uptight or something. Do I plan on getting tattoos on this arm? Probably not. Nothing on this arm or leg except for like a couple knickknacks. But no big plans. It's not something I think about. I worry so much more about this little spot right there than this whole arm. So it's not something I worry about. How did you meet John? And I kind of get this question a lot, and I just want to put it out there that John is, like, kind of shy when it comes to the YouTube videos. Like, he'll be in a couple of them, but you cannot hear him speak, and he's a little nervous around the camera. We met, he was following me on Instagram a couple years ago, and I never really noticed, like, who he was. Like, And I was hanging out with, like, one of my best friends at the time, and he was like, Oh, I know this kid. Ex-girlfriend and his ex-girlfriend did a photo project together and we ended up standing in the background awkwardly while we waited for them to finish. And I was like, that's funny. Ended up kind of like messaging him because I had heard through that that he went to the college that I was at going to at the time. And I messaged him and I was like, hey, I heard you go to CCP. And he was like, no, do you wanna hang out? <laughs> So I was like, yeah. He came out to West Philly to see me and he walked me to work. And years and years after like getting to know him, I now understand that that's like a really nice gesture of him because I really don't think that he would walk anywhere. <laughs> yeah, he walked me to work, which was kind of like a three mile walk, but it was nice. He bought me coffee. And afterwards, I was kind of like, that dude's weird. But yeah, he hit me up after that, and we were hanging out, and we hung out for a while as friends before we started dating. I guess that just all happened. Like, we joke because we don't know when our anniversary is, so I'll wish him, like, happy probably anniversary every year. I don't know. That's how I met John, in the most weird way ever. And he told me I had, like, an art show. A couple years ago and he said he came to it just to like see what I looked like in real life and I was like it's weird but yeah that's John he's the best and I'm glad we met on like really weird circumstances when my mom asked how we met I was like oh we don't eat meat and there's only a couple of us so you know we met each other eventually I don't know but <laughs> that is the kind of the story that's the true story that's the story without any gimmicks. Jobs I've had. 
So I kind of mentioned the other day, like I used to work at McDonald's and I've had so many different jobs. I guess I'll just list them in order. My first job was McDonald's. I started working there when I was 14 and I ended up working there for seven years. And like, that's crazy, but that's how long I worked there. I was a manager, I was the grill manager and then I was the store manager and I went to Hamburger University and all that stuff and I know that's crazy but that I didn't I was vegan there I don't know I know it doesn't make any sense but it definitely helped in my transition I remember my first day of ham you is the day I became vegetarian so in that twisted way I don't know but I did stop eating meat I also worked at Kmart, I worked at Target when I lived in Texas, I loved it. I was a telemarketer for a summer and it's the most money I've ever made. To this day, being a telemarketer was so chill. I had the little headset on and I had a cubicle and I decorated my cubicle. I was a telemarketer for a mortgage company and the mortgage company went under when I don't know, the housing market crashed or whatever, but it was so cool. I made so much money as like a young person. I wish I still had that job. I used to work at a street streetwear BMX boutique on South Street. I was a lifeguard for two summers and I was a barista for two years. So those are all the jobs I've had kind of all across the spectrum. I have my food safety certification, I have my first aid certification, if you're looking to hire. Yeah, I think that I've had some really cool, unique jobs. So I keep getting these little questions about music that I like, and I'm afraid that it's going to be boring, so I don't want it to be like its own video. So I'm just going to list some stuff off really quickly. I love the Smiths, Morrissey, like... You can see and hear me talking about Morrissey all the time. He is my world. Joanna Newsom is my favorite, favorite artist ever. My favorite composer. All of her albums are perfect. I would say getting used to her vocals is like, just get used to them and I swear you're in for the best thing ever. Her songs are really long. She has 10 minute long songs, but sit through them and just close your eyes. It's amazing. I love Joanna Newsom. I would travel to the edge of the earth for her. She never tours. I went on that Chicago journey just to see her and I would do it over and over again. I always keep money in my savings account. If for some reason she walks outside of her house and does a show in California, I'm gonna be there. I love Joanna Newsom. And if you have no idea who I'm talking about, a couple years ago she married Andy Samberg. So if you ever see Andy Samberg at like an award ceremony or whatever and you're like, who is that ethereal goddess standing next to him? It's Joanna Newsom. I have so many Joanna Newsom tattoos. Tell me you love her too. Oh. I like to listen to Pandora a lot. I also downloaded Apple Music. I'm doing their like three month free trial and I really like it. On there I listened to Childish Gambino, Blouse, I've been really into, Blouse is so amazing. And I thought that they would be like a little too indie for, me for Apple Music, but they're on there. If you want to start listening to Blouse, Into Black is the first song I ever heard, and it was amazing. The music I like, I like sad music, I like all that sad music. Me Without You is one of my favorite bands, I've been listening to them since the beginning. I've for a while, I had been to every single home hometown show they had ever played. I have one of each of their concert shirts. I just love them. They're the best. They make me feel amazing. Going to their shows uplifts me and it opens up something in my heart that is closed for the rest of the year, I promise. I, I think Me Without You has done so much for me and I feel so blessed that I can live in their hometown and I can appreciate all of their shows. They are a bigger band. I remember they opened for Brand New um, in like 2006 and they would put all these flowers everywhere before they would perform and everyone was like, what is this? I want to see me. And I was like, stop it. I love Me Without You. And 
I love a lot of different bands. I don't know. It's hard to talk about music because I'm just listing names. Do you miss your piercings? It sounded like you missed them in your last video. I used to love the life that I lived being modified. It used to be great. It was something I loved. It was something that helped me connect with people. But I also used to live where my parents live, which is a lot smaller of a town. You run into a lot less people. You stay inside most of the time. You have to drive everywhere. So I didn't have a lot of public interaction on the regular basis. Moving to Philadelphia, people were talking to me all the time. They were stopping me to talk. They were criticizing me. People would take pictures of me. And I really didn't like the attention. Like. That's why when I dyed my when I tie my hair more natural and it stopped being red, it was such a relief to me. Losing the piercings was such a relief because I don't like being singled out in a crowd. I don't like when I'm with my friends and a stranger comes up to us and is like, "Hey, you're freaky." Like, I don't like that, and that is something I can't control on their end. I cannot control people in Philadelphia. I cannot control how they feel and their their feeling of entitlement to talk to strangers aggressively and all of that stuff, but it just was not something I experienced when I was younger. And before that, I was never put under a spotlight for being different. And I don't know, it just never happened. And if you were alternative in the suburbs, it just it meant something different. But coming here in Philadelphia, it just like, it was embarrassing for strangers to come up to me while I was like with John and stuff, and I didn't like it. It really did embarrass me, and the occasional like, oh that looks cute is great, like, oh I love that tattoo, I th those are very welcomed, but like, oh you kinky, like, I don't like that, and then that is scary, and it, it's, it's harassment. And if I can, on my end, limit the harassment I face in the street to practically nothing, then that's what I'm going to go for. Because I can't end street harassment on my own from my bedroom. But it's a shame, but I can limit it. I can limit how much I am harassed by wearing long sleeves, wearing leggings, wearing pants, and... I can't hide my face, so it is a lot easier for me in the world to not have piercings. And it's sad, I guess, but as I get older, I've mentioned I've just become more sensitive, I have a lot more fears, and being outside and being targeted for street harassment, being bullied by strangers, feeling trapped, like, I can't do it. And it's a shame, but when you have piercings, people associate it with, like, having kinks. And I can't tell you how many strangers, men, women, came up to me and asked me if I, my nipples were pierced, or asked me if something else was pierced. Endless. My piercings were an invitation to a conversation I never wanted to have. It happened to me at school. A girl asked me once in class, raised her hand and asked me. And I was like, you can't, you're not invited to talk about my breasts just because my nose is pierced. So do I miss piercings? Yes, but the consequences of having them like in a very public space was hard for me. So yes and no. Like, yes, I can talk about them compassionately because I remember the good times, but I can also be horrified by the bad times and remember those too. But yeah, Five Fact Friday, thank you so much. I thank you for coming with me to get my coffee. Thanks for hitting me up on Snapchat, on Instagram, on Depop. I love it. Thank you so much, and give this video a thumbs up. Let me know throughout the week what you want to hear next week, next Five Frack Friday. I read all of your comments. I try to reply to all of your comments if your reply is activated. Yeah, let me know what you want to see next week, and I love you guys so much. Subscribe, thumbs up, 
follow me on Twitter and I'll follow you right back. And until next week, got a big sandwich.